Okay, managerial accounting, welcome to the fourth lecture for chapter 22. Um, this will be the last lecture. There's a few more pages that I, at the end of the chapter, I won't cover. Uh, you should read those, um, they're important, but um, this will be the last lecture that I actually do for chapter 22. Um, this part, I'm starting on page 1,118. Uh, we're gonna talk about factory overhead variances. Um, and we're going to talk about both the variable factory overhead variances and how those work, as well as fixed overhead variances and, and how those work, how we calculate those numbers too. Um, so, one over here. So, the factory overhead rate, I'll fix my typo here when I see it. The factory overhead rate is the budgeted factory overhead divided by the normal productive capacity. This is something we actually did in a prior chapter. We used a little bit different name. Uh, we called it predetermined overhead rate where we did our estimated um, you know over total overhead and our estimated uh, you know quantity well estimated um, activity driver really similar calculations pretty much exactly the same um, you see here in, in the chapter we've got the budgeted factory overhead for more uh, Western riders and they, it's thirty thousand dollars as an overhead normal capacity they're using direct labor hours as their activity driver um, so they found out the rate, which is $6 in this case per direct labor hour. So we separate those two out into their individual categories of variable factory overhead rate and fixed factory overhead rate. Um, again, we're doing the same thing, um, except for we're separating variable and fixed. So you see the top one, the variable cost is $18,000, a total budgeted variable cost. So that's 5,000, uh, I'm sorry, $18,000 divided by 5,000 gives me $3.60. Um, so that's my variable factory overhead rate. Here's where I'm at now. I'm kind of in the middle of page 1,119. And then you see my fixed overhead rate, normal capacity, same kind of thing, and the normal productive capacity um, to find my fixed rate. Now also notice that next couple of lines that shows you that if you add those two together, if you add the variable overhead rate and the fixed overhead rate, you will find the same number as the factory total factory overhead rate. So this fixed rate plus this variable rate will give you the, adding those two together will give you the total factory overhead rate. Okay, so now on to the kind of, kind of like the other ones, we got a little bit more detail uh, than that that we can figure out. So my control variance is the difference between my actual variable overhead and the budgeted variable overhead for actual production. So it's computed as follows. We got variable factory overhead, my actual variable overhead minus my budgeted variable overhead. So in this case, what's that com what that comes down to is that I'm going to need to, um, <coughs> excuse me, take my standard hours for the actual units produced times my variable overhead rate that I found up above. So in this case, that would be 4,000 direct labor hours, and that number is different than obviously what it was before because we did not manufacture maybe as many uh, as we anticipated. So the actual units produced is what we, what we go off of, and that's what's important. This one, if there's one thing students tend to forget a lot, it's this right here. It, that's standard hours for actual units produced times by variable rate, and that's what I found up here. So in this case, it's 4,000 direct labor hours times $3.60. Um, which gives us a favorable variance. My actual variable factory overhead was 10 on the next page, $10,400. My budgeted was 14,400. So I have a favorable variance. Okay. Okay. Next is the fixed factory uh, overhead volume variance. The fixed factory overhead volume variance is the difference between the budgeted fixed overhead at 100% of normal capacity and the standard fixed overhead for the actual units produced. So we're gonna take the standard hours for 100% capacity minus the standard hours for actual units produced times my fixed factory overhead rate. So in this case, the 100% capacity was 5,000 hours. Um, direct labor hours, 4,000 was what my actual uh, standard hours for the actual units produced. And I multiply that by the $2.40 to get my variance. In this case, it's a $2,400 um, unfavorable variance in this case. 
Okay, now like I said, the next several pages you can look at yourself and read. Um, but next on this video, I'm going to go through a couple of example problems. The first one is basic exercise 22-3. This is the part where I'd recommend you pause the video and work this problem on your own to begin with. Um, and then push play again when you're ready to um, see the answer, see, the, see uh, me go through it. Okay, so a brief exercise, basic exercise 23 on page 1138. It says Belling and Company produced 15,000 units of product that required four standard direct labor hours per unit. The standard variable overhead cost per unit is 90 cents per direct labor hour. The actual variable overhead was 52,770. Um, determine the variable factory overhead controllable variance. So we're using this formula here. We need to find the actual variable overhead. And the budgeted variable overhead. So the actual variable overhead is given, and that's the 52,770. And then the budget overhead, I need to take the um, budgeted hours based on actual production. So they produced 15,000 units and four hours per unit should have been um, the number of hours spent. Um, and then I need to take that times the variable rate. So that's this right here. Standard hours for actual units produced. My standard hours per unit, standard hours per unit is four hours. So I can multiply that by the 15,000 units produced to get the total number of hours. But now I need to convert that over into dollars because I want to know what my budgeted overhead was. So you take that times 90 cents, which is my variable rate. So these in parentheses. So this part here is figuring out my standard hours because 15,000 my actual units produced. So my standard hour for actual units produced, and if you do that math in your head, that's 60,000. And then 0.9 is my variable rate. So I'm using this formula right here to find this. So 54,000. So my variance then would be. 52,770 minus 54,000. That is a negative number, which means it is a favorable variance. And that's really it for 22-3. Now 22-4, which deals with a volume variance, a fixed variance instead. So um, my fixed over factory overhead volume variance is standard hour for 100% capacity minus standard hours for actual units produced times my fixed overhead rate. So let's see if I can find those things. So the standard hours for 100% capacity, standard hours For actual units and my fixed overhead rate. So my fixed overhead rate is given to so the standard fixed overhead rate is $1.15 for direct labor hour. My standard hours for capacity, it says the standard fixed overhead cost for 115 for 58,000 hours, which is 100% of normal capacity. So 58,000 is my standard hours for normal capacity. My standard hours for actual units produced, again, it's 15,000 units. Times four, because there's four hours per unit. So now I can write my formula exactly like it showed here. Standard hours for 100% capacity minus standard hours for actual produced. So it equals 
Standard hours for 100% capacity minus standard hours for actual units produced. In parentheses. Multiply that by my overhead, fixed factor overhead rate. Which gives me a negative 2300. And again, is a favorable variance. Now it doesn't show this so much in the book, but my total overhead variance, just like all the rest of them, what I can when I find the detailed versions of these, my total overhead variance, both fixed and variable, you could add those two numbers together. And since they're both negative, it would come out as favorable variance. It doesn't ask you to do this in the problem, which is something I want to show you. And that is it for chapter 22. Um, you still got about just shy of two weeks before the exam. So this is the first chapter that's going to be on the next exam. And the, um, you know, I'll start lecturing on the next chapter of the next video that I do. So 